to late today's lecture review is on the history and career opportunities chapter one of my lady at this point you should have already read your chapter um, there are going to be different things that we learn about today as far as objectives as far as the appearance and has enhancements how to recognize trends that have been influenced by cosmetology Cosmetology itself is the art and science of beautifying and improving the skin, hair, and nails. It is one of the oldest professions in the world. You're going to find out how women colored their hair and what that meant. African women's hairstyles were symbols of tribal traditions. They conveyed a message. Many used red earth or clay for coloring, and they had very elaborate styles and wore headdresses and according to the type of headdress they had, the fancier the headdress was, the higher their social status was. Egyptian women, uh, think about Cleopatra, uh, used personal cosmetics. Uh, they stained their nails red. They wore lavish makeup. The Chinese uh, stained their nails crimson and ebony but in 1100 BC, royal families changed to gold and silver nails. Greek women used perfumes and cosmetics for religious purposes. Women wore lead on their faces, coal on their eyes, and vermilion on their cheeks and their lips. Roman women used facials made of milk, bread, or wine. They mixed chalk and white lead for their cosmetics, and according to the color of their hair, was the decision on their society. So if you were to see a woman walking down the street that had black hair, blonde hair, red hair, that meant her status of how she stood in the community. During the Middle Ages, they wore towering headdresses, intricate hairstyles, cosmetics, and colored lips and cheeks, but they did not wear cosmetics on their eyes. During the Renaissance time, they moved a little bit more to modern history, and men and women wore elaborate, elegant clothing. They used fragrance and cosmetics. Highly colored lips, cheeks, and eyes were discouraged, but they were dressed with ornaments or headdresses. Then the Victorian age hit from 1837 to 1901. Masks and packs made of honey and eggs, oatmeal, fruit, different things were used to improve the skin and women pinched their cheeks, cheeks and they bit their lips to bring color to them. During the 20th century, 1906, Charles Nestler invented the perm machine. In 1908, Max, Max Factor launched cosmetics. In 1910, Madam C.J. Walker uh, started her fact, factory, factory and school and became the first self-made millionaire in history. In 1920, advertising jumped from 390000 to $3.2 million within a 10-year span. In 1930, there was a preheated perm method. They also, Charles Revson, introduced nail lacquer colors. In 1940, just 10 years after the first preheat perm, came the cold wave perm. In 1950 to 2000, tube mascara came into play, paper nail wraps, ammonia-free hair color, color weaving with foils, and French manicures. The 21st century saw gentler, no-fade colors. Day and men-only spas came into play, and it was an age of very specific services that were offered. It is so important that you continue your education. It provides you with the best opportunity to advance your career and achieve real success. Hairdressing is ever changing. You can look back at magazines from the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s till now and see the difference in how it has evolutionized in our society. You have to be able to stay up on education in order to meet your client's expectations. During your educational journey and your continuing education, you can dis discover all different types of career paths. 
you may be a hair color specialist, a texture specialist, a cutting specialist. You may want to be a distributor or a sales consultant. Manufacturer education and cosmetology instructor, a creative director working on the sets of films and movies. So just remember continuing education offers you those opportunities to advance and to be what you choose to be. There's a wide variety of career options for you. Make the best of it.